Hey, everybody. Mean Joe with Boss USA. So we're here for the second episode of the Newport 17 1-6 scale build-along video. I'm here with Chuck Hamilton and Ronnie Coleman. We're going to build this kit, and we're going to help you guys get through it. And we're going to try to get to step five today, time permitting. Uh, I wanted to make sure I take a quick second to let everybody know. Anybody that wants to follow along with this build can go on to www.balsausa.com. Enter in coupon code N17BUILD, all caps, no spaces, just like Mr. Hamilton is showing right here. Let's blow him up so you can make sure you can see it good. And make sure you get on there and enter in your coupon code and you will receive 10% off of the 1-6 scale Boss USA Newport kit so welcome to the show guys thanks for being on hey thanks joe actually uh that first uh episode uh, of setting up the table uh setting up your bench uh everybody seemed to like it so uh, let's get to building today yeah thanks for having me Appreciate we got it. ronnie coleman if anybody out there doesn't know that's the infamous ronnie coleman uh he's a south Bend area guy that uh Started flying indoors a few uh, years ago and just is, he's flying jets now. He's gone from indoor, uh, zone kit builds to indoor flying, flying jets, builds all the projects. And uh, Ronnie, it's always a pleasure to uh, have, in, uh, have it in our projects. Yeah, actually, I followed quite a, I followed along quite closely with Ronnie's build of the Pete Goldsmith. Was that the Sapphire? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, the Sapphire. The Sapphire and it also built one of his larger gliders, the Skylark. Yeah, it's very cool. Last year. Very cool. All right, so let's get started on the build here. We talked the other day about making sure that you have all your stuff organized. Today we're going to try to get through step five, time permitting. If 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 we're running short on time and we're seeing that it, uh, it's going pretty good, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a little bit extra. But timing it out on my end, I think we're going to be about an hour through step five with all the explanations. So I did want to point out right away, that we did find, I was able to, uh, as we're going through this, part of what we're doing at Boss USA is going through all of our kits and manuals and plans and making sure everything matches up from old school. Uh, there were some production changes, so some of the pieces and parts aren't going to be what they call out in the manual. I will make sure we point those out when we get to them so that way you guys aren't confused. I know that's one of the things with the new builders especially. They, they might get a little bit confused on what it is that they're looking for because they can't find the piece that the manual calls out. So just exactly. so you know, that's all being taken care of as we go. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to move my camera down here so you can see what we've got going on. Chuck, you can go ahead and talk about what we've got here. Yeah. All right, guys. And so what we're going to do, obviously, we're going to start with step one, which is laminating um, some parts here to get the project started. But to preface this a little bit, what Joe and I and Ronnie have done is we've gone ahead and built the first side. And we did that for a couple of reasons, timing to ensure all the parts are correct. But also, um, as a little, I guess, as a builder tip is when we build our second side, OK, in which I'll do that here with you guys today, Ronnie, Will and Joe as well is we're actually going to build the second side literally right on top of the first one with a piece of wax paper um, or saran wrap, whatever your flavor is, in between. And that ensures that we're building two identical um, uh, pieces of framework so that when we put these things all together, there's no discrepancies in the build. Um, I do want to jump back. I know on the, on the build, on the, on the setup, um, guys, um, if you've already gone ahead and labeled all your parts and made baggies like we talked about, save all those um, knockout parts, um, what we call the, the perimeters and things. These are great for scrap pieces that you could use, maybe break apart. Um, you can cut it, re recut a new one out of this. They're basswood, balsa wood, so forth. And also, if you remember that on that, Joe did that great tip on a pin um, with a little piece of balsa wood to hold your plans down. Well, there's some knockouts on the wing ribs when these little perfect little circles, see if I can sh show those to you here. Those are ideal for what we were discussing about that little piece of wood to hold your plants down and keep things from tearing. So that's my little little uh, little bit there. So keep all the spare parts. I just throw them in a box. I got them on the floor as I get them, um, and I throw them down there. And uh, if I need anything, now we're taking the same wood, same dimensions, the same densities, all that, and we're adding them right back into our kit for uh, some things you need. Also, if you need to make little sanding sticks and things like that, it's also a good supply of uh, wood. So starting with step one, 
on laminating some parts. Ronnie, um, why don't you go ahead and jump in here, bud? Ron's gonna laminate that uh, um, the, the the wing saddle and the bottom of the nose. So we're gonna start with WS um, WS1 and FB1. We're gonna laminate those parts together, Ronnie. Yep. So here I have both the wing saddle parts and the bottom of the front of the fuselage parts, and I'm using thick CA and they recommend using a pen, but for me, usually I can just eyeball it because since they're such small parts and I mean, they're identical, I just line them up with thick CA, you have time to work. So it's not like it's gonna instantly be stuck together and then you can't move it around. So I tend to usually just eyeball it. And like that, Ronnie says that thick CA gives you a little bit of time to work with around five to seven seconds. And, uh, and once they're stuck good, um, you can go ahead and pin uh, FB1 and WS right down to the plan. Yep. And then we do the same thing nope. to the other. Yeah, okay. So you're going to make ma the matching set, which is a good idea. That's called efficiency, Ronnie. Really good. All right, and Joe's back with us here. And okay, guys, so remember that straight edge we talked about on that top long long run? Let's go ahead and uh, put that um, straight edge right on the top of that, uh, what is that, uh, oh, what is, what is uh, the long run material? Was it 360 by a quarter? Yep, that's what that is. So let's go ahead and put that on there. Like I said, we've already built one side, so we're actually still gonna use that as our reference point just to keep everything nice and dandy and straight and we'll be all good so and if you guys have any questions while you're if you're doing this at home um you're following along with us that's awesome if you have any questions don't uh don't hesitate to chime in and give us a shout if you're stuck you have a question and guys i'm actually pinning my straight edge kind of against the edge of uh the fuselage a long run so that it's uh that it's stable it doesn't move around and also if you notice i don't know if you really can see that on my plan joe my top long run i left a little long on the edges and i did that so that i had something to pin against down the edge so uh so one of the things that you can do do you got audio from me chuck uh joe you're sounding perfect buddy okay so one of the things that you can do i know ronnie's working on the laminations when we get to some different pieces, I want to kind of try to show uh, with these smaller pieces, Ronnie is actually uh, doing them by hand. But what you can actually do, and I'm going to flip over to my other camera here. What you can actually do when you do these, if you want to make sure that you have any like notches, like there's some notches on this one. When you want to line up your notches, when you're going to do your laminations, when you put these down on your board, if you put a pin right in the notch on each part, so there's a notch on that end and there's a notch on this end. When you bring your laminations together, like Ronnie is doing, you actually have it lined up already so that when you put your pieces down, you don't have to worry about sanding too much around your notches as well. With these smaller parts, it usually, it worked just fine the way that we showed you, but that's just another method of doing that. Okay, so Perfect. I'm trying to see where everybody's at. All right. Joe, I got a little tip here I'd like to share with uh, our friends out there. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, um, a little bit about balsa choice. Uh, when you're looking, if you look into your kit, you'll see the color of the wood um, will be different colors. And what that basically tells you, there's different hardnesses uh, within the wood, which is very typical um, in any balsa product. So what I do, is on on a project like this that top launch run is you know a very key element a very um high strength point and so what i do is i look for the hardest wood out of the, all that strip stock we have which is a 3 16 by quarter okay and so i have two colors here i don't know if you guys can really see those i have a, a lighter one on the bottom and a darker one on the top and i just use a pinch test with your fingernail and dig in there whichever one is harder that's the one i'll use for that top launch run Okay, and the softer one I'm gonna use on the bottom launch run, and you'll see when we get to, uh, oh, what is it, step uh, step four, 
on how we have to bend that to make a curve. And that's where I'm going to use a little bit of the softer one. So just a little tip there. So when you're sorting stuff out, picking stuff out, and it's a really good idea. And keep that in mind when we're, we're doing, working on the wing spars, we want those harder wing spars. We're actually put those on the bottom of the wing, on the bottom spars um, as, as the highest strength point. So but let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to get that, that top long joint on there. And it looks like it's the lighter color one for me. It's going to be the harder. It's going to be the the most dense. Let me put it that way. So, and also as like to once again, we keep everything down to a minimum here um, as building this project. And guys, I pretty much built my whole fuselage side with just a single edge straight edge. Why is that? A you got I get, I get a good grip by it, and also it allows you to do nice cleaner square cuts because you have actually have a, a perpendicular reference uh you can go to so let's get that top line run down pin it in place I'll take a little bit more off here because i'm actually once again us got we're building literally right on top of the previous one we did to ensure an accurate identical few slide side so just a little little tip there so you guys um out there building You doing all right, Ronnie? Yep. One other thing I like that is like since like we said we both we all already built the first half. When I went and built my first half, I made duplicates of everything that I had to cut. So now everything is already pre pre cut and basically the second one should fly together faster than the first one. Right. That's a good point, Ron. And good good job. All right. I've got my top laundry and pinned down really good and rolling now. Uh let me see here. Okay, in the step three, it talks about the lower round lingerie, which is once again, it's my softer one. And it talks about putting a six inch slit uh, right right down there to help the bend. And Joe, um, you've got that overhead camera. Is that probably a good spot for you to jump in and maybe show show that cut and how that how and how that affects the airframes. There you go. Can you hear us, bud? Might have lost. Joe you got G. me? Are we oh, there? I got you. There you're there. All okay. right. Got a little worried so, there for a second. What we're talking about here is this is the bottom lingerie on that Chuck is referring to. So what we're going to do is if you look at here, it's hard to see through my wax paper a little bit. But you can see this bottom lingerie on is actually going to have a little bit of curve to it. So what you want to do is you want to take a ruler. Lay your ruler up against your lingeron. What I normally do, so I'm not trying to do too many things at once, is I will just go in. We recommend about six inches. So what I do is I go in with my pencil as soon as I find it that I just had in my hand. <laughs> uh, welcome to modeling. Yep. Uh, and make a little mark. Okay, just like that. And then what you do is you take your hobby blade, and this is actually going to split really, really easy because it's with the grain. So find a spot in the center and just run your hobby blade right down that line till you get to six inches. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to get the bend that that bottom laundron needs without a lot of trouble. You want to try to stay as in center of that as you can. You're going to fight the grain a little bit as you move down. Just go real slow and easy and split that just like I did here. So that way when I put this up on there, it will bend easily. And that's what we're looking for. Because if you see here on the other piece, there's a slight bend. It bends about six inches from, from this diagonal down to this one. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. And I'm just uh, running a little bit uh, in front of Joe. So, and then what I'm going to do, guys, I've already got my bottom laundry and started. And just to show you what I did is I, I pinned it at the top 
right next to the wing saddle and put a, a real thin drop of CA at the very top. Come on, think of it as almost like as a spot weld, okay? Um, and once that's pinned in, then I'll start taking my other pins and I'm gonna follow literally right along the bottom of the plan or in my case or our case that we're doing, the, the bottom laundry, okay? And if you look um, right here, you can't really tell, but that bottom laundry, the split that we did is actually opened up. Um, don't do anything with that yet. We're, we're still good. And what's that's doing? It's taking the stress off of all this wood, um, which is actually a neat little neat little tip on this on this on this project. So, once again, I'm just pinning the bottom laundry in place. I'm almost there, and she's in place. Okay. Now, now she's all so in place. I, so one of the things I want to show real quick is I want to give you a little quick tip with doing that, if I can. Here we go. Go for it, bud. Um, I'm just trying to get it to work. If you pin, so I've got mine lined up, and if you pin it at the end that doesn't have the curve to it, so right. if I pin that down here on this end, before I do the rest of it, then as I go down, matching it up with my other laundry on my bottom piece, that curve will just naturally form as I go. So that way yep. it's super simple to get the curve that you're wanting to get as you move down a little bit at a time. You don't want to force that to bend. It's going to bend relatively easy because of the slit that you put in it. But right yes. where it starts to bend, you want to pin it at the top end of that. And then you want to pin it again at the bottom. And you can see mine's opened up a little bit, but that's going to be okay because yep. we're going to fix that in a minute. Yeah, that's, where, that's right. That's where I'm heading to next. And then that way this will be pinned and set exactly like Chuck was talking about earlier. You will have it on there so it will be the same. And if you want to, to keep it from opening a little bit on you, you can pin alongside it because it can be kind of tricky trying to pin through that with the slip. You can pin alongside it, and that holds it in place so that when you glue it, everything will stay where it's supposed to be. Exactly. That's just where I was going to go to, Joe, was uh, now that we've got that bottom one in there, just pin right alongside it. And you'll notice that that gap closes really nicely, okay? And then once you've got that pin, and it might take a spot or two to kind of keep that gap closed, once, once you're happy and that gap is closed, then take your thin CA and run it right down that little seam, okay? And basically what we're doing, we're doing a, Joe, correct me here, what we're doing, a poor man's lamination. <laughs> so, uh, and it, like I said, it takes the stress out. And like I said, just thin CA, a couple of spot welds, if you will. Once again, guys, um, this glue is so good. You don't really need to be laying down really thick beads um, at this point. This stuff is awesome, and uh, it does its job. It actually soaks in balsa to balsa, like we talked about in our early episodes. It just wicks in, if you will, to each other. Yeah, you won't even know that that split was ever there. The cool part about the way the CA works is with the thin, if you do that, it's actually going to be stronger there than it was before you put that split in. Yep, absolutely. Okay, moving forward. You guys all caught up out there? You're all doing good? And once again, even if you don't have a kit now, um, but you want to jump in a little bit later, um, still do that discount, all right? Go online, 10%, N17 build uh, in the promo code for you to apply for a discount. Get your wheels, get your covering, your, uh, your decals, everything you need. Um, they have building supplies as well. It's, that's all applicable right there as well. So, okay. The next part of the build, we have the top lingerie on, the bottom lingerie on, the wing saddle, the bottom, uh, the nose piece. We're going to add the first four um, vertical uprights uh, to the fuselage. All right. And that's the 16, the 3 16 square balsa in your kit. And once again, kind of pay attention. The harder, the denser the wood on the front of the airplane, the lighter, the softer the wood in the back of the airplane. It also helps with balance. And if you kind of learn this process early on in the building, uh, it, it'll just you'll it'll just become second nature. So you'll start pre-sorting all your wood. So keep everything light in the tail as possible. So you keep that you know, that that balance 
um, point on your craft critical and you don't have to add any unnecessary weight. So, excuse me, in everything you do. So in that mind process as you build, lighten the tail, the more denser, heavier materials in the front. So uh, I'm gonna, I've already kind of pre-sorted. This is more of a denser one that I have for the front. And those are gonna be my first four which is probably going to be up to what we call the trailing edge of the wing saddle. Then after that, I'm going to do the lighter ones, the lighter wood I have to the back. So let's, let's go ahead and do those first four guys. And also I'm going to just a little, um, this is something that I picked up. Oh gosh, years ago, a um, little miter cut box. Um, I use this all the time for doing nice little square cuts. And when I'm building what I call um, uh, stick built uh, airplanes, and it really helps with keeping things nice and square. And obviously you don't need to have that. Like I said, we're keeping this thing relatively simple, straight edge razor blade. Uh, your, little bit, your little bitty cutting mat could be a piece of cardboard, a piece of glass. It could be a, a nice tail or a tile. This single edge allows you to get a nice, clean, vertical cut instead of a knife where you tend to want to saw or leverage. So uh, let's let's lay in those first, uh, the first four and keep keep plugging right along, Joe. Yeah, and does anybody have any questions to this point? About techniques or what we're doing, anything different? I don't see any coming up. At this point, you're just putting wood down. Um, we're just gluing wood. Gluing wood. It's pretty simple to think of. I know a lot of people get a little bit intimidated uh, when they start this process. But just keep in mind, we talk about it all the time being just wood so as you're doing your builds if you screw something up it's easy to go back and i can guarantee that sometime during this build while we're doing this we're going to screw something up well i just cut a piece of wood a little bit shorter than it was supposed to be and shame on me so uh but that's what that's guys that's all right and as we go along in the build we'll we'll show you how to fix that and remy and remy did that this what and why i did and when i do cut my typically when i cut my my vertical uprights I'll cut them about a sixteenth of an inch longer and kind of sand the fit. Well, I didn't do that in the first one, so shame on me. So, but there's that second one or the the first one in. That's a nice fit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin those in place uh, right where I want it. But I'm not going to glue them yet because I'm going to go back once I get them everything in place and I'm happy. Then I'm going to go back in there and wick some CA in there, some thin CA, and just keep plugging right along. I'm going to save that piece because I'm going to get to use that right there so uh we'll just keep plugging along and cutting in all those uprights and something um also a little bit further down in the instructions it's very important that we build a right and a left part and we'll get to that here probably on our next episode episode three on on how to ensure that that's a um and, and how we do that and why it's why and why it's critical to do that ronnie how you doing out there bud He's concentrating. Boy, he is. He's way at it, guys. He's going to be through this thing before we're done. Joe and I are going to be yapping along, and uh, Ronnie's going to be going to be done. It's so cool that Ronnie um, started building. He built a quarter scale Balsa USA um, D7 as his first kit built ever, um, and I believe he won the kit at an event. So I thank you to Balsa USA for that. Those guys are always. Awesome and getting uh, young people started uh, in the hobby. And then I think Ronnie then built a Zeroli Stuka uh, after that. And then a, he built his first jet. So um, everybody's got to start somewhere. And Ronnie started right here with the Balsa USA airplane. Ronnie, can you still hear us, bud? I don't think he can hear us, Chuck. No, I don't think he can. Ronnie, can you hear us, bud? No, that or he just, he, man, maybe he's Joe. Maybe he's just in the zone. Well, he is building away. I've got him up on screen. He <laughs> is showing, he is showing no uh, notification at all that we are actually in his ear. So he may have inadvertently muted himself. So I wanted to show this while we're, while we're talking about it. I know a lot of the folks out there, they, they ask questions about this all the time. So I'm getting ready to cut some of my verticals. And I'm going to show mm -hmm. you a quick tip about how this works. So I'm going to come down here away from my pins. 
So All if right. I'm going to cut this vertical here, what I do, because there's an angle at the bottom. So if you right. grab a very sharp pencil, place it in space where it's going to go, and make your mark along that line. You can see there, I've made my mark for my angle. And I cut that on that angle. Now you want to give yourself a little bit of space. So you want to cut more to the outside of your line than the inside. Yep. And when I bring that piece over, you can see that that fits perfectly in there. I don't know if you can see that, but that fits perfectly in there. So that's a really quick and easy way so what I do, kind of like Chuck did earlier, I've got a little cheap miter box down here that I keep on hand to make my ends square. It's a lot easier to make them square on this miter box than it is to try to sand it square. So then when I go to start my next one, I have a square end to work with, and I just do the same thing. So like for this piece down here, I will just line it up, grab my angle, this works on the plans as well. This is how I cut all these when I work and right onto the plans instead of building on top of this other one. That gives me my angle. I cut to the outside of that line. And then when I place this in, okay, so I cut that one a little bit long, but watch. So now all I have yep. to do is sand a little bit off the end Sand very little at a time. You don't want to take too much off. You can always sand more. You can't put it back. But there, now I have a perfect fit. So what I want to do is I want to take time to show you the difference in the joints. There you go. I'm going to bring, just gonna bring that up. Yep. If I can get the right screen here. So this... Get too many and what Joel's going to do, guys, is he, yeah, he's going to show you um, the difference between a, a, a good joint and a bad joint. And, and as if, if we do a bad joint, and our first instinct is to put more glue in there, well, that that doesn't make things stronger or better, actually. So uh, he's going to um, show you a little what a good joint should look like and what a and what a bad joint looks like. So once he gets in there and jumps that up, and Joe, is that your granddaughter? It is. Awesome. I'm trying to find the right application window. Uh, let's see, application window. Here it is. So here is a bad joint. That would be right here. You can see the gap around the wood. That is not going to give you a solid joint. Okay, so on the next one, I will pull up, I will pull up the correct way, which is going to be, give me just one second. Too many windows open. Uh, we hear Ronnie's audio saying in a way, but we can, he can't hear us. Apparently not. There's a good joint. Sorry that took so long. That was a little more painful than I that's expected right. it to be. But that was worth the, it, though. That's what the good joint's going to look like. You want full coverage all the way across. And the thing about our kits is, is they come with a little bit of extra. So if you if you do it wrong, take the time to make it right. Because like Chuck did earlier, he had a um, he had a miscut you can always yep. use that miscut a little bit later so that you somewhere can down the further piece yeah so don't throw it away don't get frustrated at it and throw it away uh but that's what it's going to look like perfect all right as joe was doing that that great demo there i'm 
I'm about ready to put in the last uh, the last form or last three sixteenth square on the tail end before we get to the tail post. And I do want to um, when I built the first one and I was looking for the wood, I'm thinking I don't have a tail post. Was that a mislabel? And ended up the tail post is in a small parts bag, guys. So uh, it's a I think half inch by uh, three sixteen inch by five inch long. And there's a small parts bag that's in there. It's usually sitting, I think, underneath the cowl uh, in the box that that tail post is in there. So don't don't be alarmed that if you didn't get it or um, it's a missing item, it's, it's there. And once again, if there is anything that's ever missing or maybe uh, uh, like a die cut sheet or something like that, don't hesitate to uh, get a hold of get a hold of us at Boss USA, um, and we'll get you the correct parts. Okay, I have all my Verticals are in place. There's my tail, my tail piece. Um, like I said, originally it was five inches long. Or like I said, I've already did the first one. What's also kind of neat is that that angle cut right there was cut from the first one. So all I have to do is cut a square at the top, and we'll have the tail post in, and then we'll work on the diagonal. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and keep me keep plugging right along. One of the things that I wanted to point out too, so that people don't get confused, is on the die diagram in the front of the manual where it shows the dies. Yep. The and I'm looking at the number. I think it's 84, but I want to make sure. For your lamination sheets, this die number 84, those are actually yep. labeled backwards in the in on the diagram. So your your F, your FB1 and your WS1 are swapped. So it should be the top piece on there should be the FB1. The bottom, the next piece with the notches should be the WS1. And that get that did, I just don't want anybody to get confused on it when they go to build that. No worries and good catch. And, and what we'll try to do is we're going to make builder's notes as we go along, and we'll post them on the Facebook page. Maybe we'll do a list. It'll, it'll be on the on a YouTube video as well. So uh, and then obviously um, we'll do the corrections in the manuals. Yep, that one's already done. Actually, that would be part of the new system that we're going to use. Those those parts will be etched with the proper numbers. Oh, nice. Okay, I've got the tail post in. And and one of what I'm going to do, guys, is uh, go back. I've got all my verticals in, all in place, and then I'm going to go through with my thin zap or my thin. I'm sorry, my thin uh, balsa ca, and I'm going to just hit those hit those joints. Once again, it's it's almost like spot welding. I guess that's the best way that I can uh, I can describe it. Joel, how are we doing on time, bud? Uh, we're doing pretty good to see. We're at 33 minutes right now. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Ronnie's probably done and having a pop break the way he goes. Yeah, you guys so. are ahead of me because I've been flipping through screens. No, no, that's right. That's, <laughs> and that's all the and that's all a part of this. Now we have Ronnie in there and uh, he's uh, he's building along and um, I'm doing some quick tips and you're showing things live on stuff. That's what makes this thing exciting and keeps everybody moving right along with questions. Um, we have any questions out there, Joe, that maybe we can help with anybody. Do you see anything? Uh, let's see. I don't see any questions. Nice. I hope these guys and they're all, they're all building and, uh, and, pl and plugging away. Ronnie is talking in the chat. He says he's still here. He must have oh, lost okay. his mic or something has happened on his end. So he says, I don't know if you can see me, but I'm still here. We, we see you, Ron. We and see actually, you. We, we, we can hear him uh, sanding and doing his thing in the background. So Yeah, he hopped out. Okay. I think he's trying to fix it. Oh, right on, right on. Okay. So as I got all the verticals in, let's start adding some diagonals. And what we're going to do is we're gonna add the first diagonal to the front, uh, which is the diagonal that's right above the wing saddle area, all right? And these are more of a 
trial and error kind of fit because of you notice how they actually fit in there, but it's not that bad. Um, I usually just do like a starter cut and kind of eyeball it and trim the first one from there. And you'll see how it tends to fall right in place, even with your eyeball cut. So uh, let's go ahead and try that. Put that one in place. And yeah, that's not bad at all. I got, I got a little lucky on that one. Okay, so let's get that first. And I'll cut the vertical on this one. And I guess I'll get the vertical cut. I'll put it that way. Got that real close. And I'm going to trim that as needed. And then I'm going to work on the more of that diagonal cut. And then once I do that, a little bit of knockoff and sandpaper to get that fine tune that angle. Uh, there we go. And then I'm just going to do that little other nail cut, and that thing should fall right in place. Boom! There it is. All right, let's get that little fur out there that's hanging that's hanging up, and that will fall right in place. And once again, on my diagonals, guys, I'm going to just keep them in place. Like I'm not going to glue that one yet. All right. I'm just going to keep it in there and I'm going to work on my other rear diagonals and then we'll have that fuselage wrapped up and that'll, that'll, be, that'll go really quick. So now, um, once again, that first diagonal is a 316 square, which is over the, the wing saddle. So it's a high load area. I'm going to take my 316 square uh, more on the stiffer one. I'm going to put it at the top. I've got my 1 8 by 316 uh, for the diagonals. And we're going to start cutting those diagonals in. Once again, I'm going to just I like to start with the top. I don't know. Maybe that's my preference. Joe, do you start at the top? You start at the bottom when you do that? I usually start at the squarest edge okay. and go in from there. So it depends on where the diagonal is at in the build and what it's butted up against. And this, again, is something you guys want to make sure you take your time to get right. These parts are critical for this airplane. This is where your structural strength comes from. So you want to make sure you're getting good joints like we showed in the clip, the pictures earlier that you, uh, so you don't have any um, problems with your airframes coming apart on you. Yeah. Well, it's like building a bridge, right? If you ever look how a, a bridge is built, it's built just like this. It's all these structural side supports. And again, I'm a little bit behind, so I'm trying to get caught up here. Uh, no worries. We'll, and that's that's the beauty of the videos. Like I said, if you just ordered your kit today or, or it's on its way, it's coming. You can always use these videos as a reference and then eventually catch up to us. And that's also why we're doing this like about every third day kind of thing. So it gives um, everybody out there a chance to catch up, join the build, um, maybe even build a second side. So everybody's building that first side um, this morning. They can watch this video later and they can see how we're building on top of the, of the first one to make two identical parts, so. And you'll notice as you go along, as you start cutting these diagonals in, um, it kind of gets real, uh, repetitious is not the word, it just, um, you get you get used to the, the angles, the cuts and how they look, and then it actually goes a little bit quicker than you, than you think. Actually, in a weird way, I kind of enjoyed this part of the build. I was, uh, I was excited about this part. Uh, Dale is, I believe that's Dale. Dale is asking if you can pan the camera down just a tad on your end, Chuck, so that we can get a better view of the table. Absolutely. Give me. Let me get this last one dropped in, and I'll jump in and see if uh, see if I can do that for you, Dale. Perfect. Now he's dropped in. All right. Pop this over here. So you can see I'm a little bit behind where Chuck is right now. I'm getting my diagonals cut. I've got all my verticals done all the way down. I've got my tail post in. And I'm just now getting caught up with Chuck on the diagonals. Uh, so we're all coming along pretty good here. Ronnie is plugging away over there. I can see him. He is. Yeah, oh, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, he's back. Welcome back. Dale, is that any better on my table? Or do you need more, bud? Let me adjust it so you can see. How's that looking, Dale? Is that better? I'm assuming he'll catch to us in a second. Okay. And my cancel says I can't see half of what you're working on. For me or for who? 
I think for yours. We pan it down, but it's really it's really hard to see because the lighting. Okay. I'm working on it, guys. I'm working on it. I'll what I'll do is I'll add the overhead here. So we can have both going. All right, I'm going to try something here and see if this works. I'm going to readjust my camera. There we go. Now we can see it. Is it better? Yeah, that's much better. What do you guys All think? Right. Is that better? There it is. Yep. Now there they go. Okay. Now Thanks, good. guys. Thanks for letting us know about that. These will, we talked about this earlier in the backstage area. These will get better as we go. Because um, we're going to iron out some of the details and some of the uh, issues as we do the build, to be honest. We literally, Joe and I had a conversation along with the owner of Vols USA, uh, one of the owners, about doing this. And this kind of. <laughs> Joe and I got to slap this thing together in about what three days, Joe? Yeah, three days. So we'll, like I said, we'll we'll get better um, as we go and uh, to get you guys seeing everything you want to see. And like I said, don't don't be afraid to ask questions. Yeah, exactly. If there's something that you can see and you want to see closer, please let us know because I do have it set up for on my end where I can show. Um, I can pull the camera down to get a close up view of stuff too. So. Maybe I'll look at adding a second camera on my end, Joe, as far as um, maybe an overhead or something like that for the guys. As, it's as actually very along. complicated, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. guys be worth it, right? It's, it's not easy. You know, um, maybe – what about if I wear one of those, those little helmet ones? I have a GoPro. Maybe I'll strap that on my head. Well, I don't – the Go, it's hard to use the GoPro for streaming. Is it? All right. Yep. Yeah, we'll figure something out for the guys. Like that. You gotta have there's a lot of pieces that you have to have for that. I'm gonna we'll make pull it my overhead off for a second. Because I don't you don't want to look at the back of my head while I cut this piece of wood. And time check, we're about 45 minutes right now. Perfect. I'm literally throwing in the last diagonal right now. Once again, I have none of my diagonals are, are glued in or CA'd in, I should say. Uh, I'm just uh, making sure everything fits the way I like. Nice, good fit. Now, one of the and things that is. one of the things that I'll point out too is that while we build this, especially the first one. The first one, when you build the first one, I don't recommend um, gluing any of the pieces until you got the full pieces all laid out so that you can make sure they're going to fit. Yep. And that way, if you do do a, do a shortcut, you can always move it down to a part that fits uh, as well. Okay. I have all my diagonals in place, the 3 16th square above the wing saddle. Uh, and if you notice on the on the instruction book, we leave this diagonal out. That comes in a little bit later uh, down in the, in, the, in the construction. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my balsa USA thin. And I'm just gonna hit my little spots there. Make sure I got it set that I already got that one glued. There's the diagonal, Did that one, that one. And just guys, just forward, out there, this one six scale Newport. I built the quarter scale. Actually, the quarter scale one that I built is used in the man, um, in, in our in our catalogs. It's built the same way, almost identically, uh, the same way. Obviously, it's just a little bit bigger. So, uh, um, so, the same typical type of construction. Obviously, it takes a little bit more room, a, a little bit bigger of a table. It could be done on a four foot by eight foot card table, uh, but same type of construction. So, I'm. I'm done. I've got the, the side done. So what I'm going to do 
And Joe, I'd, what I'd like to show the guys, this would be a good, good example uh, to do. So I'm going to go ahead and unpin everything. Everything matches the one beneath it really well. I tend to overuse pins. I like things nice and flat and true and, and everything. So, Ronnie, I'm, I'm going to mute take you a second. for a second, Ronnie. Okay. Go ahead. I'm going to mute you. Uh, Wes is asking for a close-up view of the diagonals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take down the overhead camera here for a second. And I'm going to okay. get a closer up view of the diagonals here so you can see. So you can see here the diagonals. I get the camera lined up. Everything is in. We're going to get good joints on everything all the way around. Everything should Jill line said up. That's, that's not your first airplane. Just like that. Make sure you've got good joints. Joints are going to be the key. Okay. Make sure you get them in there good. Now, like I said earlier, I'm not as uh, caught up to um, Chuck yet because I'm running all the technical stuff from this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. That. Um, that, that's all right. I'm just actually clearing my bench here a little bit. I just pulled off the one that I built. This is the one that just came off the top with the great Balsio CA. It's dry. It's good. Uh, I'm going to take the wax paper off the one that I had between. And once again, um, wax paper, saran wrap, uh, whatever your flavor is. Saran wrap a little bit clearer, but a little bit more stingy to work with. I'm going to throw away that wax paper. And then what I'm going to do, guys, here's the one I built last night. I'm going to put that off to the side for a second. And grab my handy dandy sanding block and just take a look. And what I'm going to do is just lightly hit, see, there's a joint that I already popped loose. So I'm going to stand that, keep it in place, spot weld it, and we're good. I'm just going to lightly hit all the spots. This is 80 grit, guys. All right, just hitting, just hitting the high spot, high spot, so we get everything nice and trim and clean. Looking good. And then what I'm going to do, because this was the backside, so this was um, sitting like this. I'm going to go and I'm going to hit the spots again. From the back side now. I'll hit all the verticals and all the diagonals. I'll even run a little bit of CA on those uh, laminated parts that we did. Uh, Gary, he's got his on there. His, his is actually further ahead than mine. Um, he's already pulled his second fuselage off of his bench. I am working to catch up to them because I've been running all the pictures and stuff and I'm a little bit behind. So I'm just now getting to my rear diagonals. So there we go, guys. We have two identical few slide sides built like they were built in the same jig in the same factory. So uh, notice I have some of these pieces long. I'll trim those later. Just, uh, yeah, I'll just do that later before we start joining the sides together. But there we have. And What'd you say, Joel? About an hour for the first one. We did the second one in about forty minutes. So, uh, uh, yeah. Well, we're we're Kansas. almost an hour right now. We're at forty nine minutes. Nice. Now. So next, um, uh, back on we're back on Tuesday at seven o'clock. We're going to add our our doublers for an inside, and this is where we need to make a right and a left, a uh, few side side. And so we'll jump back in there. Um, also, if, and if you guys want to read a little bit further along in instructions. We'll add that doubler, and then what we'll do is we'll build over the plans, we'll prop them up, and we'll join them together. And at that point, on a few slides construction, that's the hardest part. Then the rest is just fiddly bits, putting in formers on the top to make it round and so forth, and uh, landing gear blocks and things like that. But uh, 
guys, that went pretty quick, pretty easy. Um, Ronnie, uh, are you back out there? Can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you guys. All right. Uh, do you have your second one off the board yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, while I was gone for <laughs> of a course. little bit, I, I, I was still building, and you can see both of the full sides here. I can't even tell which one I built first. They're pretty much, I mean, they're, they're identical, so. Then you did it right. Yep. All right. All right. So I think, uh, let me get in my camera view here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stop building on mine for a second and I'll catch up with my homework here in a little bit. Uh, do we have any other questions while we're still here on the first part of the build? This is going to be step one through five and mine will be caught up with theirs here in just a couple of minutes. Any other questions? Uh, okay, West. Joe? Yeah, West, we actually do sell just the plans. We have the plans and manuals available on BossUSA.com. And one of the things that I wanted to announce is I'm actually in the process of getting all of the digital manuals up on the website. So those will be under airplane accessories, digital downloads. You'll be able to go on there and get that stuff. And what I'm going to do, since we've got a couple of minutes here, I'm going to just pull up uh, BossUSA.com if I can. I'm looking for the right window here. Let's see. So um, while Joe's doing that, um, don't forget, guys, I remember that little slit. I'm going to see if I can bring it up a little bit closer. That's where we split that bottom lounge run, okay? Don't forget to add a little bit of wick CA in there to make that super strong. Right there is that slit on the bottom. Uh, as we flip it over and you do the CA joints on the other side, I don't know, I can't remember if I did that or not. When I when I flipped it over, I think it looks like I did. I can feel it, so. And just don't worry about when you guys sand a few slides, uh, sides, just whisk it over. You just want them basically true and flat to each other. Um, and sometimes what I do, um, even after uh, your first tendency is to blow that balsa dust away, don't do that. You just put, come back with your thin CA and actually what that balsa dust does is it kind of impregnates and maybe into that little micro gap um, that you can't normally see. It actually impregnate in there and it's almost like a little filler. I don't recommend it for screwing up mistakes or anything like that, cut a brand new piece, but for something you know, that's very minute. Um, it does a great job on that. I do that all the time on some of my other projects and just, I don't know, maybe I'm just picky and I, I enjoy the part of the build that the, even a uncovered airframe looks nice and tidy and clean. So I'm not going to try to pronounce that name, but he's asking about getting kits to Norway. If you want to send us an email to BossUSA at BossUSA.com, we will give you a estimate on shipping and what the cost would be on your end. So real quick, I want to show this on the screen here. Uh, this is going to be a new feature at Boss USA. If you go over here to Airplane Accessories, Digital Downloads, we're going to be offering downloads of the manuals. So our manual downloads are going to be $5, and eventually they're all going to be on here as I get them built. And that's also where you're going to find the Boss USA PDF download for the catalog as well. So all that stuff is going to be available on BossUSA.com. Uh, again, it's under the Airplane Accessories tab, Digital Downloads. Nice. All right. So I'm going to pull that down. And, okay, so I want to thank my two guests. I want to thank Chuck. I want to thank Ronnie for coming on. Ronnie's already reading his manual up into the next step and getting ahead of us. Look at this. He's already studying his manual. Look at that. <laughs> or, Ronnie, is that a classroom thing for Ball State? Because I know you're still in school, technically. Oh, no. All oh, that stuff's online, so. <laughs> I'm doing it in my bedroom. All right, perfect. Well, I want to thank everybody for showing up. I want to thank my two guests. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode. We're going to air on Tuesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I will figure out what our next steps will be for that video. And we should be good to go. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to bring up Chuck so you can see him good. Don't forget to go on BossUSA.com if you want to build along with us. And input coupon code N17BUILD. That all caps, Thanks, guys. no spaces. And we will make sure that those get to you. All right. So I want to say, as always, thank you very much for watching.
and happy building. See ya. Oh, <laughs>